Hi everyone, it's Nicole. Welcome back to my channel and another card making video tutorial. Today we're going to be coloring some brand new 3D embossing folders with the Tim Holtz Distress Pencils. So I absolutely love coloring the 3D embossing folders. And these are brand new from the Out of This World June 2023 release from Simon Says Stamp. And today I thought it would be fun to see how the Distress Pencils work on or for coloring these. And in addition to that, we're also going to do it on Craft Cardstock because I've been on a Craft Cardstock kick. First though, I want to stamp the background. I'm a big fan of a little bit of something happening in the background. You guys probably know that if you've been following me for a while. And I decided to take the previously released thank you text from uh, Simon Says Stamp. I love text backgrounds. Simon Says Stamp has some amazing ones. Any kind of background will do here. Just something kind of small. I think even like polka dots or stripes would be cute if you don't want to do text. And I'm going to ink up my thank you text background with the unicorn white pigment ink from Hero Arts. Um, I really love this pigment ink. And I am using a sticky mat in my Misty to hold my craft cardstock in place and I'm going to stamp it a couple of times to get a good impression. It's going to be faint and that's totally what we want here because we will be coloring on top of it. This is a four and a quarter by five and a half inch panel by the way so it's going to completely cover the front of our standard card. Now a lot of the new 3D embossing folders from Simon Says Stamp come with coordinating dies. I'm actually not going to use them today, but you could very easily. So I am going to take my embossing folder and I'm going to flip it over and the part where the design is pushed in, that is the front basically. It's going the part that's bumpy is going to push up into the text. So make sure you have it incorrect. And then I am going to run it through my Spellbinders die cutting machine. And I love the platform, my embossing folder with my cardstock in it, and then two of the backers from Simon Says Stamp I find is the perfect pressure for my machine. Uh, one would also probably work, but I want to make sure that embossed area is very detailed. So I have zoomed in a little bit closer here so that you can really see what's happening and look at the beautiful subtle text on the craft. And now we're going to start coloring. Now you could do this with any of your favorite mediums. I wanted to, like I said, try these distress pencils. I love the Distress Pencils. These have been out since late last year and they are another fantastic product from Tim Holtz. Can we say anything else? And I am gonna start coloring in the raised area. Now I would caution you to not press super hard and probably don't use a ton of water. That will, you know, kind of cause some issues with your embossing. It could, I guess is what I should say. I tried to use a very light hand. And then as far as blending goes, I'm going to use my water in my uh, water brush to blend that out. Your uh, small paintbrush dipped in water would also work fantastic. I just personally love these water brushes. It's very, very easy. And I'm going to start coloring things in. Now for almost everything here on my first card, I'm using just about two shades per area. So a couple of shades of green, a couple of shades of red, and then my white and a yellow for the, the centers of the little flowers for the strawberry plants. Very subtle, very light. That's exactly what we're going for. Now, when I take the time to color in, color in an entire background, no matter what the technique or coloring medium it might be, I don't like to cover it all up with a bunch of stuff. This is the focal point of our card. The only other thing we're going to be doing here is adding a sentiment that is only going to add to the card and not take away from the coloring. One thing I noticed as I was coloring in my images is that we're losing a little bit of the detail from when I add in the shading. So that darker color of green. And I do want to mention what colors I'm using. So for the green for the strawberry leaves and stems, I've got peeled paint and rustic wilderness. 
And what I'm going, what you're going to see me do is actually go back with Rustic Wilderness and draw in a little bit more detail once anything that's wet has dried. And this is a very teeny tiny bit of water. So I'm gonna be able to go back over that pretty quickly. I also like working in small areas and just kind of working my way like down and throughout the design. That tends to work best for me. So we're gonna continue doing that throughout the entire thing. Uh, just kind of starting in one little area and then working our way out, making sure to hit everything. Uh, there's always the chance you might miss something and generally that can be hidden, uh, maybe with a sentiment or something like that, or you can always go back and, and touch it up later. But we're just going to go ahead and finish coloring. I did speed it up a little bit and I'll show the detailing and such as we go. My red colors, that is going to be candied apple and fired brick. My flowers is going to be Picket Fence. That's the white, which I colored pretty lightly. I think a little of it shows up, but it's, it's not gonna be super dark. And then the yellow in the center is Fossilized Amber. And I'm hoping that I'm, yes, now I'm gonna start going back over some of the dry leaves and just leaving that pencil line in. It worked fantastic. I'm super excited to try this with other embossing folders. I'm only going to do a couple here today. And then I am taking black soot and I am going to add in the seed detail on my strawberries when they are dry. Look how beautiful this is, you guys. It's coming to life. Now some other ideas. If you emboss your background on some Bristol Smooth cardstock, I also have a video here on my channel where I have done some embossing folders and colored them in with Zig Clean Color Real Brush Markers. It is a great way to use your markers and create some stunning backgrounds. You can color these in with maybe small blending tools and your favorite inks. You can color them with your favorite alcohol ink markers like Olos or Copics or whatever you like to use. Colored pencils would also be great. Uh, watercolor would be great. My only tip is if you're coloring to make sure you don't press very hard because you want to keep that 3D embossed uh, look and texture. That is the magic of this background. You can really see it here. The color is just drawing that out. And like I mentioned earlier in the video when I stamped the background, we are coloring right on top of that text stamped background. No problem gonna finish just a little bit more here and then I will go back. This is also a very good example. You can see the leaves that I've gone back with Rustic Wilderness and added more detail. And then you can see the leaves that I have just watercolored basically that need a little bit more of that detailing. I think I adds a lot to the finished look. So there is my strawberry background. I think I have just a little bit more to add to this. The other background we are going to work with today is the Splendid Daisies. There are so many new embossing folders in this Out of This World release, so definitely pick your favorites. Try it with this technique. I would love to see it. Definitely tag me on social media if you try it because I love seeing what you guys are working on and even reposting and things like that. Okay, so now I'm really going back and did I miss anything? Like I'd missed a little green area. I also wanna take my black soot and go in and add all of that little detail. So let's take the Splendid Daisies and just like before, I stamped my background with the thank you text on the Nina Desert Storm cardstock. And this is an embossing folder that has a coordinating die set. For the three bigger flowers, there are dies. And then obviously the strawberries, there were some dies that go that coordinate with that if you wanna cut those from a separate sheet of cardstock, which is a very fun technique as well. And we're going to emboss this image and color this one in with our Distress Pencils. 
Oh my goodness, look how beautiful this is. Oh, the detailing on these embossing folders is absolutely stunning. So, so good. I would love to try this technique with the Olo um, alcohol ink markers. Uh, same background and everything and just color over it on the craft cardstock. I think that would be super pretty. Now I do have my pencil sharpener out here because I do need to sharpen some of my distressed pencils. I would just caution to be gentle because the I don't know, I don't think it's necessarily called lead, but they're kind of soft and you don't want to break them. I have my poor um, Seedless Preserves has been broken many times. In fact, it's the one there over on the right of the screen. So for my first daisy, I have picked Seedless Preserves and picked Raspberry. And my Seedless Preserves keeps dropping all these little, uh, all the little lead, I guess, for lack of Maybe that's what it's called. And I just need to knock some of that off. And then for the center of all of my daisies, I am using Vintage Photo and Walnut Stain. And then I want to blend out the petals with my water brush marker. And I'm really trying not to over blend at all. You can always go back after it's dry or if it's wet, it's just going to leave a little bit more pigmentation and add in some additional detail as needed. In fact, I added a little too much of the seedless preserves and then I got too much dark purple in the flower center. So I'm just going to go in with my walnut stain and add a little more brown. Um, was it walnut stain? I think so. I'm also going to go back to the peeled paint and rustic wilderness that I used on the strawberry card and use that for the greenery down below. And I want my flowers to be very bold, bright, vibrant, summery type of cards. Both of my cards today, I really wanted to have that summer feel, summer love and feel to them uh, with the flowers and strawberries and all of that good stuff. And again, I'm gonna blend out and then I will go back when the ink is dry and add in some extra detail to those leaves. The red color combination is again going to be candied apple and fired brick. This is the color I used for my strawberries for this next daisy. And I tried to use five different color combinations for all of my daisies just to have a lot of color represented. Same walnut stain and vintage photo for the flower centers as well. And here is that detailing on the leaves, which I think makes them pop. Oh, I love it so much. I was really excited that this technique worked so well and I will be using it again for sure. Now for my yellow daisy up here, we are going to use wild honey and some mustard seed. I really wanted it to be yellow and then we're going to do a little bit smaller daisy in orange, which will be spiced marmalade. And then I can't remember if I used, we'll see what I used here in a minute. But car, or pardon me, spiced marmalade will be the, the orange-ish color. And these flowers are smaller and they do not have coordinating dyes. The three bigger flowers have coordinating dyes if you want to use those. I believe I used wild honey for my uh, blending color for that one. And then this is Villainous Potion with a little Seedless Preserves for my final daisy. So it's going to be a little bit deeper, darker purple and a little less pink. And that is it. Once we have all of our flowers colored, I'm going to go back in, add some kind of shading detail that I'm not going to blend out and we are gonna be ready to do some sentiments. Now, like I mentioned earlier in the video, I don't wanna cover up my backgrounds. Those are the stars of the show. My favorite way to do this is vellum. We are gonna take the etched greetings 
sentiment set from Simon Says Stamp, and this was in, in a card kit a month or so ago, and now there are coordinating dies available, and I will go ahead and stamp a couple of my greetings on vellum using the embossing ink from Simon Says Stamp and then sprinkling on the Simon Says Stamp white embossing powder. Both of these have coordinating dies to die cut the sentiments perfectly, uh, including the loops and everything around that uh, thank you scripty sentiment, which makes me so happy. Uh, you don't have to have a huge panel on the front of your card. You could just die cut right around that greeting. And then the thinking of you is more of a label. And again, it's going to be perfect with the vellum. You can still see through it to the background of the card, but your greeting is still extremely legible, which is what I am going for with this. Now, while I have my ink and embossing powder out, I also want to take a smaller sentiment from the etched greeting set that says, I think the world of you. And I am going to stamp that on another piece of Desert Storm cardstock with the embossing ink. We will emboss this with white. Now I, I left this in, I accidentally pressed too hard on my sentiment the first time. See how the, the end of the greeting looks great, but the first part of the greeting is really smashed out. When you have a delicate greeting like this, try to lightly press so that you don't get too much, like you don't press it too hard. That's what I wanna say. And so I did end up stamping it again with a much better results. And I forgot to mention that I prepped my cardstock with the Simon Says Stamp Powder Tool to help keep that embossing powder only on my stamped part of my greetings. Let's go ahead and die cut all three of these now. I like to take a little low tack tape or post-it tape in this case, and we are going to die cut everything. I also wanna put my embossing powder away. I almost dumped it all over my desk because I didn't put the lid on it, which is never a good thing. I think we're gonna put the label in the center of the flowers and put thank you in the just just above the center line in the strawberry card and then place the I think the world of you right below it. I love that it's on the craft because it really just kind of blends into the background but still is very legible. I'm going to hide my liquid adhesive behind the white embossed areas on my greetings. So for thinking of you, I'm just going to gently place that down on my card kind of right in the center and place some acrylic blocks on top to help hold that down and flat until the glue is dry. Then we're putting some glue on the back of thank you, again, hiding it back behind the white embossed areas and then gluing that down to our card. And let's glue the rest of our sentiment as well. And then an acrylic block on top is going to help hold that down and hold it flat until everything is completely dry. Now it's time for embellishing. Simple embellishments here because our beautiful colored backgrounds definitely are eye-catching and we want those to def be the prominent part of our card. So a little white heart on each. You guys know I love my little heart embellishments and I thought white would be perfect here with our white embossing. So a little one on thinking of you and a medium one on thank you. And then we're gonna grab several of my favorite shades of Pretty Pink Posh Pearls and we're gonna scatter them. I thought about doing multiple colors on the thank you strawberry card, but ultimately decided to stick with pistachio. I think it's subtle and I ended up liking it the best. So we're going to stick with that. Even though I dumped the white ones out, I put them back. <laughs> um, and we're going to use an embellishment wand to pick those up and put them in place over our background. And I like the two smallest sizes the best and that's what we're gonna stick with today. The triangle trays from Simon Says Stamp are my favorite tool for holding on to all these little small embellishments and 
then being able to funnel them back into the storage containers that I use for all of my sequins, confetti, pearls, all of that good stuff, gemstones. For our floral background, I did choose to pick several colors to coordinate back to the daisy colors. So on this one, in addition to the pistachio, which I will use down close to the leaves, we're also going to use light orchid, creamsicle, and lemon. And I only kept with those colors. I, I felt like the red was just a little too red for this card, and the rest of the colors were a little bit softer. So we're going to stick with those, and I love how it turns out think we did about, let's see, six, seven, eight different pearls. Normally I like odd numbers, but it's kind of a visual, whatever I think looks good. Once we have our pearls on our background exactly where we want them to go, it's gonna be time to adhere these panels to white top fold card bases or side fold, whichever your preference might be. I have been using the Dot Runner from Simon Says Stamp and absolutely loving it. It works great, it's nice and strong. I've been on the lookout for a new adhesive runner. This might be it. Uh, just wanted to let you guys know that I have been using it. We've talked about it a little bit in our Friday Lives and such, and it's worth a try to see if you like it too. Oh, I love it. I think these are so, so pretty. And see how easy those triangle trays funnel all of our embellishments back into the storage cases or storage bags, whatever you use. I use them both ways and every time it works perfectly. Gotta love that. I always use a bone folder to make sure the scoring on these pre-scored and uh, cut cards from Simon Says Stamp, I love the top and side fold, is nice and creased, and then I just use the adhesive and place my panel on top. Thank you guys so much for joining me today for these two cards featuring brand new products from the Simon Says Stamp Out of This World release and coloring in 3D embossed areas with the Tim Holtz Distress Pencils. The supplies I use to create my cards are listed and linked below the video here on YouTube. Thanks you so much for watching me today, and we'll see you next time. Thank you so much for joining me today for another paper crafting tutorial. I love being able to share with this incredible community of crafters. I want to give a huge shout out and special thank you to my amazing Patreon members. If you're interested in joining Patreon, please click the link in the description underneath the video here on YouTube. Patreon is a private community where you can support more of what I do. There's exclusive content. You'll receive a handmade birthday card from me during your birthday month, monthly lives for my top tier patrons and more. We would love to have you join our growing community. If you enjoyed this video, please subs subscribe to my channel, click the like button, and don't forget to click the notification bell so you're always notified when I have a video or go live. Thank you again for watching, and I'll see you again next time.